Hello my friend. The banana. It's the most popular fruit in America and Canada. A staple in lunch boxes and breakfast bowls. It seems so simple, so reliable. But what if I told you that every single banana you've ever eaten is a clone? And what if I told you that this massive global clone army is on the verge of being wiped out by a devastating plague? This isn't a hypothetical threat. It's happening right now. Today, we're going on an incredible journey to uncover the secret life of the banana. We'll see how they fly through the air on jungle cableways, travel the globe in a state of suspended animation, and face a crisis that could make them disappear from our stores forever. First, the shocking truth. The banana you know and love, the Cavendish banana, does not have seeds. It is sterile. Therefore, it cannot reproduce naturally. Every single Cavendish plant in the world is a genetic clone of the others. They are all propagated from cuttings, by taking a sucker, or a pup, from the base of a parent plant and replanting it. This creates a massive monoculture. But here's why that's so dangerous. In the 1950s, the most popular banana in the world was a different variety called the Gros Michel. It was reportedly creamier and more flavorful. But a fungal plague called Panama disease completely wiped it out. The industry scrambled and replaced it with the Cavendish, which was resistant to that strain of the disease. Now, a new, more aggressive strain called TR4 is spreading across the globe, and the Cavendish has no defense against it. The clock is ticking for the world's favorite fruit. The journey of today's banana begins on a massive plantation in the tropical belt, in countries like Ecuador, Costa Rica, or the Philippines. These regions provide the hot, humid climate that bananas need to thrive. And what you might call a banana tree is actually the world's largest herbaceous flowering plant. A new plant, grown from a clone pup, takes about nine months to produce a single massive flower bud. This bud droops down and reveals rows of small flowers, which will develop into hands of bananas, all growing upwards towards the sun. The entire bunch, weighing up to 100 pounds, is called a stem. After producing this one stem, the main plant will be cut down, and its life cycle is over, making way for a new pup to grow in its place. Through the plantation. One, the cutter uses a long pole with a sharp blade to slice through the thick stalk holding the 100-pound stem. As it begins to fall, the second worker, the backer, catches it on his padded shoulder to cushion the blow and prevent any bruising. Then comes the most ingenious part of the process. The backer carries the stem to a nearby overhead cableway system. These steel cables crisscross the entire plantation like a giant ski lift. The stem is hooked onto a pulley and begins its journey, gliding smoothly through the air high above the ground. This system allows the farm to transport tons of delicate fruit quickly and efficiently to a central packing house without the damage that would be caused by bumpy roads or handling. Harvesting is a physically demanding and delicate process. A team of two workers moves. The stems arrive at the packing house on the cableway, a constant river of green gold. Here, a flurry of activity begins. The large stems are cut down into the smaller hands or clusters that you recognize from the store. These hands are immediately placed into large tanks of cool water. This washes off the natural latex that seeps from the cuts and begins the crucial process of removing the field heat from the fruit. Workers then grade the bananas, discarding any that are damaged. The perfect hands are placed on trays and the iconic brand stickers are applied. The entire process is a race against the clock. The goal is to get the still hard, green, and unripe bananas into a box and into a refrigerated container as quickly as possible. This is where the journey gets really incredible. The boxes of green bananas are loaded into refrigerated shipping containers called reefers. The temperature inside is maintained at a precise 13.3 degrees Celsius, or 56 degrees Fahrenheit. This specific temperature is the banana's sleep mode. It puts the fruit into a state of suspended animation, halting the natural ripening process. These reefer ships travel for two to four weeks across the ocean, from the ports of Latin America or Southeast Asia to the ports of North America. The global banana trade is a multi-billion dollar industry, with the United States importing over four million tons of bananas a year, making it the world's largest consumer. And all of it depends on this unbroken cold chain. 
The final and perhaps most critical step of the journey happens in a warehouse just a few days from your local grocery store. The pallets of green sleeping bananas are wheeled into special airtight, ripening rooms. The doors are sealed, and the rooms are filled with a small, controlled amount of ethylene gas. Ethylene is a natural plant hormone that a banana would produce on its own to ripen. By introducing it in this controlled environment, distributors can wake the bananas up on a precise schedule. Over the next four to seven days, the bananas transform. The starches turn to sugar, the peel changes from green to a perfect yellow, and they develop the sweet taste and aroma we expect. They are timed to be delivered to your grocery store at the peak of their ripeness. From a vulnerable clone on a tropical plantation, to a flight on a jungle cableway, to a long sleep across the ocean, to a final wake-up call in a local warehouse, the journey of the humble banana is one of the most complex and precarious in the entire food system. It's a marvel of global logistics that brings us our favorite fruit for pennies a pound. But its story is also a warning. Our reliance on a single, genetically identical clone makes this entire multi-billion dollar industry incredibly fragile. It forces us to think about the true cost of our food. 1. Does knowing that every banana is a clone facing a potential plague change how you view this common fruit? 2. The banana is incredibly cheap in the store, despite its complex journey. Does this make you reconsider the environmental and labor costs involved in global food trade? 3. If you had to choose a new fruit to replace the banana as the world's most popular, what would it be and why? If this deep dive into the secret life of the banana surprised you, please hit that subscribe button and share this video with a friend. Your support helps us explore the critical stories behind our global food supply. Thanks for watching my friend, we'll see you in the next one.